I don't think I'm a bad guy, but every so often I like to think, what if I was? And I, I kind of did this thought experiment. I started working on this last year, and every so often I just record a, a little video, and I've kind of compiled them. And, and here's the premise. The, the premise is, what if I was an evil dude? And I wanted to be emperor of the world or president or, or whatever. I wanted to run stuff and I wanted to do it with an iron fist and I wanted to really keep control of my subjects and know what they're doing, make sure that nobody rises up against me, really take good control and run a tight ship. And I thought, well, what are some of the ways that I would do that? What are some of the tricks, the techniques, what kind of modern technology would help me with that? And so I, I kind of did this thought experiment about what I would do if I was the bad guy that, that took over. So here are a few brain droppings, just a few thoughts, my, my evil thinking about what I would do. I think that's the movement that evil people do. It's either there or here or somewhere, but that's what I'm going to do here is toss out these ideas and tell me if they're just ludicrous. I assume I'm the first person to ever think this way. I don't think anybody else would have ever thought of this. I don't think the technology exists. So it's probably a kind of more of a science fiction kind of thing. But but let's see what I have to say. Let's see what my brain's been going through here. Have you ever heard somebody say, you know, kind of joking around, be careful, they'll put you on a list or I'll bet you I'm already on their list or something like that. And I, I don't know that any government has ever thought of doing this. But if I was going to be in charge of the government and I had bad intentions, this whole idea of a list, that could be a smart thing. And I think about the technology that's available. It should be pretty easy for a processor to crunch all the numbers. You know, I even think that Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel, I could probably, just with the version I have, I could probably crunch enough to to do this for 100 million, 500 million people. I think the system's big enough to do that. If not, it could easily be made that big. But I would probably do the list where I would I would get a list of everybody who has ever um, gotten a driver's license. And so then I would have that list. I'd probably have another list of everyone that's ever been born. I'd probably have another list of any, everybody that's ever died, so I can kind of remove them from the other list just to clean things up a little bit. I'd have those lists. I, I might have a list of everybody who travels uh, beyond their immediate, you know, 50-mile area, and that would probably get rid of a lot of people who are sick, uh, you know, like terminally ill, um, or, you know, 90 years old and they haven't left their neighborhood in 15 years or that kind of thing. I'd probably have a a, a column in one of the lists that, that has the ages of people. I'd probably, you know, and it would be easy enough to do this. I could do something under the Patriot Act or something like that, which is what I would call it. And I would have something where all the gun owners would be listed. But not everybody who buys a gun it has to register. I mean, there's some states that they do, but some places, you know, I think Idaho, Montana, Tennessee, Wyoming, I think places like that, you don't have to have a license to have a gun. You can just go down and buy one from somebody off the street. Um, so maybe then it would be a good idea. I wonder, oh, you know what? I could go through credit card companies and I could see purchases of ammunition. And then I could track track that to the people. And I bet I could come up with a list of everyone who has purchased ammunition from bulk munitions or everybody that's purchased, uh, I don't know, you'd have to almost do a place that's primarily ammunition just to keep track of that. Or Brownells, that's a great website for gun parts and such. Uh, so I'd definitely get their list. Now, of course, if, you, if I call them and I say, hey, this is President Shepard. And uh, I would like a list of all of your customers of, from all times and what it is that they purchased. They're going to say, hey, no, not without a subpoena. And so then I, I think I could get a subpoena. Uh, I mean, that would be easy enough to do it. So, well, this is a matter, a matter of national security. So we're not going to use our normal, you know, due process thing because it's an urgent circumstance. And by the way, y'all can't ever tell your customers that we have a list of them. 
And uh, now this is wacko. I don't think anybody else has ever thought of this. And if they did, there's nobody in government that would violate our trust, that would be dishonest and go behind the back of, of the very people that they work so hard to serve, protect, and provide safety and freedom for. They probably wouldn't do this. I'm probably just, I don't know. But, but how, would these, how would these lists help? And I guess one thing that I could do is if I had all these lists, I could kind of cross-reference. And I could look at my Amazon.com list, and I could see everybody who's ever, ever purchased one of those Gladstones or Gadston or whatever flags, those yellow ones that say, don't tread on me. Or I could look at everybody who's ever purchased one of Larkin Rose's books or, uh, you know, The Most Dangerous Superstition or something like that. And then I could cross-reference that with the people who I know are more likely to to carry guns and, and kind of be warlike, which none of the dudes have taken that over. They've shown throughout history. So I guess I could look at males who have a copy of Most Dangerous Superstition. You know, I could probably talk to Google and get a list of everybody who's ever searched for Bitcoin, uh, the word Bitcoin. And they're going to be a lot of looky-loos, but they're probably not going to be on the same Brownells list and Ammo Seek, everybody who's ever accessed that website, or Gun Broker, something like that. They're not going to be on that same list. And then I could look for the people who are generally, you know, maybe have a little bit of liberty leaning, but they still completely believe in obeying the man, which in that case would be me. Uh, and so, you know, they'd still be waving flags and showing, I love the people who would come and take my guns from me. I love and support the police and military. And it's like, okay, these are obedient people. They talk a big talk about freedom, but you still see them waving the same flag the IRS waves in front of their buildings. So they're not much of a threat. So I, I would kind of narrow this list down, or a new list uh, of all the other ones compiled. And I could probably come up with a pretty good idea of a number of segments of the population. I could know men who own guns, who are not very obedient, who've been to jail a time or two, who didn't, you know, weren't in Boy Scouts, or didn't get that indoctrination at any point. And I could come up with that list. I could probably come up with a list of other things. Just, I bet I could figure out who the artists are, you know, who buys paint, and who buys a, an easel, and who's on Facebook looking for art forums. And that kind of thing. I, I, I bet that kind of list. Huh. Nah. I'm probably the only guy to ever think of this. I don't think anybody else would do that. I think I'm just being wacko. I'm not a tech genius. I've built a, a dozen or so websites. And, and I know a little bit about tech stuff and, and mobile phones and, and how some of that stuff works. But I'm by no means an expert. And I don't know that this is possible, but I think it would be. And I've thought about times that I have had someone else take control of my computer. And I, I would push the button on some special app or program or website, and it would say, may the other person control your computer? And I would say yes. And then they would do all of the, the complicated tech stuff that's way beyond me. And so it made me think, evidently, it's possible to control a computer from away from <laughs> right where the, the computer is, from, from a remote site. And then I thought, there's a button that I pushed that said that there is permission uh, for the person to do that. I wonder if technology exists. I suspect it does. That just like anything that you give permission, and that permission setting remains until you change it, that there would always be permission for such and such to get into uh, my computer and from a remote location and see everything that's on it and everything that I do and look up my history and, and all of that. And, and I'm pretty darn certain that that technology exists. And so it seems that there's just a matter of, of a little button being pushed that says, yes, the other person can do that. And so my idea, if I was going to be a bad guy, is I would figure out a way, either, I don't know if it would be a software thing or a hardware thing, 
but I would set something up on every single computer that would give permanent permission to check it out, have complete 100% access to me. And then that would be if, you know, if I was going to run the government or run the, you know, maybe it would be a private company. I'm not sure I'd have to check into the legalities, but maybe I would just say, um, hey, Google uh, is, is let them have 100% control. And then all the government has to do, my government, is say to Google, hey, here's a subpoena. You've got to give us this information. Um, so any, whichever way we legally finagled it, the technology piece remains the same. I would be able to have access to your computer anytime. Now, I, I wouldn't, I don't think this is something that you'd be able to be an impatient and be in a hurry for. It'd probably be something you would have to incorporate and then wait until everybody switches their computers out. And some people keep their computers for six, seven, eight, nine, ten years. But I think most people change computers at least every two years. And, and maybe three would be the high end of the average. And I guess <clears throat> if I was a little bit impatient, I could probably, I wouldn't need hardware to do that. I could just do it with software, an app or a permission or something. And I could do that by saying, I could make everybody get an upgrade to the new Google or Microsoft or um, Microsoft Office or, or G Suite, Google Suite, or whatever iPhone, Apple thing it is. Well, we have to have this update for security reasons. That's what I would say. And then everybody would be like, oh, well, okay, it's for security. We've got to do it. And I would say, hey, if this thing isn't going to function unless you do this update. And then, of course, the update would have um, I don't even know what those things are called, but I would put some sort of little bug or something in there that would then let me have complete control of folks' computers. So I could do that with every laptop and every desktop and every cell phone. I think people change cell phones every one to three years. There are a few people that keep them longer, but 95% of people are changing them at least every three years. So I could have laptops, desktops, uh, tablets, phones. I can have all of that done and ready to go. And of course, I'm not thinking of this until 2021. So it would then take three years. I wish I'd thought of this three years ago or four years ago, because then it could all be in place now if I was going to be this kind of bad guy. But I don't know if anybody was thinking that way, that they would want to surveil and understand a population. I guess... I guess people were thinking that way three or four years ago. I, I'm thinking of the book uh, that I, I read about the, the North Korean situation uh, back in the day, and uh, Dear Reader uh, by Michael Malice. And I, and I guess even then, as, as the book showed, people were thinking that way even back then, of being able to surveil and know everything that people do, and they would use whatever technology they could. Sometimes that's human resources. But now, I think with all of the the cells and the laptops, we wouldn't need as much human power. But that's that's one thing I think I would do if I was a bad guy. Now, maybe I'm the first person to ever think of this, but I've got to wonder. You know, you know how when you go to Google, they have this uh, option where you can search using an image? So basically, they have technology that can, can look at the picture and then find other pictures that are similar. And then, and then I was thinking about if they had such a thing for voice technology, would there be any way that if you had a, a sample of a person's voice that you could then match that up when you hear another voice? Because if you could, I think I might use that. And I think about the protest that the, the Republicans did in uh, Washington when they didn't get their guy Trump in. And I think they call it a riot or insurrection or, or something like that. But when they had this, this protest, if they had cameras there and then they had a, a mic on those cameras, could they maybe hear the people's voices and then match that to a database? And if that kind of technology is available, I have no idea if it is. Maybe I'm the only person that's ever thought of this. But if that technology does exist, then I wonder if, and, and of course you couldn't, tell anybody, but for national security reasons, as, as part of a Patriot Act kind of thing, I wonder if I could get 
big phone companies, everybody that has a smartphone, you know, Verizon, iPhones, uh, T-Mobile, all these, if I could go to those companies and, and basically say, hey, you can't tell anybody we're having this conversation, but we need a sample from every single phone number that you have. And of course, we're going to require you to have a social security number for each person who has a, a phone. And just do a, a once a month voice sample of the outgoing phone call so that we can hear that person's voice and we know and we can match them in case we have a terrorist incident. Then we would have, you know, this huge database of uh, 300 million or however many smartphones there are in the, in the United States anyway. Um, then we have this database of 300 million people and we'd be able to match it up. So if there's an insurrection or a protest or something and we hear a voice, we can just match it to our sample, and then we know who is there. Now, maybe the technology doesn't exist. Um, maybe it just doesn't make sense to do something like this. Uh, and, you know, who has the time? And then I think about it, and I don't know. How many how many employees does the, the U.S. government have? How many bureaucrats? Or or even if they you just look at the, the, who's the intelligence ones, the CIA, how many employees do they have? And then as, as you're watching this and you're thinking, yeah, this this is the only guy that's ever thought of this stuff. Nobody, no government employee would think of this or put this into action. Then the, you know you're smarter than the average government person. But if you take three government average bureaucrats who work for the CIA, you're smarter than one of them. Are you smarter than all three? And let's say you are. Let's say that if you take five of them, you're the top of those five. But if you take ten, there's probably another one that's pretty similar to you in, in motivation and ability and such. So imagine if you took 10 out of, and I, 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 there got to be way more than that. Now, I'll put the number down below if I find out how many CIA employees there are, analysts, bureaucrats, whatever. But if you took 10 of those and you gave them a year to work on this project, and, and then you took a bunch of the, the smart computer geek programmer people, uh, the audio engineers kinds. If you, if you got a team of people together, could this technology be developed? And if it could be, then, I, then I'm thinking that if I was going to try to rule the world, be the emperor or whatever, <laughs> and I was going to try to do mean, bad things and surveil people and keep an eye on everything, then it would seem to me that this far-fetched, wacko, imagination, creative idea that I had about what I would do if I was a bad guy, seems to me that it might indeed be possible. Now, again, I can't imagine anybody else would have thought of this, especially five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, to, to start this whole thing in, in action. So it, it probably hadn't been done. I'm probably the only person to think of this. Don't imagine anybody will ever watch this video that would go out and do the same thing. But uh, if so, it'd be interesting. My friend had a newspaper some years ago, and uh, he told me about the recipe for uh, success in that industry uh, in the particular way that he was doing it. And essentially, he said almost all of the stuff you see in newspapers comes from uh, press releases. And the people who do press releases the most are the government. And so if you're a newspaper and you want to have content, which you're always looking for content, You'd prefer to have it for free. Uh, you don't want to have to pay someone to write it. So when the government sends you a press release and it's just ready to copy and paste and send it, that's an awesome thing. And so that made me think, along with, you know, I've studied some propaganda and such and, and, and psychops and, and how to get people to believe things and such. And, and one of the things that's important is to discredit the people who are opposed to you, your enemies. So I think if I was going to try to uh, have a, uh, I don't know, own the press, and I wouldn't have ownership, like it wouldn't be titled to me. But by ownership, I mean, in this sense, I mean control. And not 100%, but if I wanted to, if I wanted it to look like wheat was a good crop, then oh, it'd be interesting, oh, isn't that something? It looks like all of the press is putting out stuff that wheat is a good crop. Or if I thought that, Cigarettes were bad for people, whether or not they are. If I thought that, then I think I could, uh, you know, have my, I'd have somebody with a fancy name like um, Surgeon 
admiral or surgeon general or something like that. It really sounds like a, a big fancy name. And I would have this doctor put out information. People would believe it. And if I'm putting out these press releases and everybody's buying it up and, and it's just easy to copy and paste it, then people could believe, believe that tobacco or wheat or whatever was good or bad, depending on what it is that I wanted to put out there. And then if I, if I further wanted control, I could make sure that the, the power centers uh, were friends with the owners of big media, of corporate press. Um, so I'm talking about the big things like CNN, Fox, etc. I would I would arrange things in such a way. Of course, nobody would know I was doing this, but it would just kind of be accidents <laughs> that it would happen. But it would just be an accident that I have a a party and oh look at that the uh, the owner of Fox News is there and I'm introducing that person to an investigative reporter that always puts out the stuff that I like and saying what a promising young woman this is, and she's going to really do well in the journalism industry, and, and then maybe this, this Fox News owner would take her under under his wing, and and, and they, now there's this connection. They both owe me. I got him a good employee who really kind of works for me, but uh, he's paying her, and uh, she's happy because I got her a huge position, and all she has to do is kind of put out the narrative that she happens to agree with that I believe, and so got that covered. And then I would do other little things. You know, maybe the, the vice president of programming for CNN, uh, maybe I help him out by giving his son a job when he gets out of college in, in one of my companies or one of my friend's companies who's on the, the same team as I am and wants the same thing. And so there, there could be these circles. And I think from what I've seen at high-end country clubs and, and the social circles, um, the people who have net worths of over $100 million, many of them know each other. And they've bumped into each other in, at different parties and events and fundraisers, and they all know each other. And not all of them, but many of them have connections with each other. Which, which reminds me, just a few days ago, a friend was telling me he's proud of his daughter. She's planning to be a judge. She wants to be a federal judge, and she's only 17, 18 years old. But she is purposefully selecting colleges where she knows that the people who go to those colleges will end up uh, being judges, being senators, being congressmen, being governors, the people who could help her later in her career. And that's how it's done. She knows it as a 17-year-old who's done some research on, on how to be successful in a uh, legal profession. So she knows that I know it, you know it, I think everybody knows that that's kind of how things are, are done. And nothing's official. It's not that a, I'm paying someone to hire somebody and that I'm paying somebody to regurgitate what they think I'm thinking. It just all kind of happens to work out nicely that way. And it's In that way, I don't think I, I could be convicted of conspiracy because there, there is no written documentation. There's no way that people could say, hey, Shepard, the only reason that you introduced this gal to this guy was because you wanted them to have a working relationship and spit out the press info that you want and only you want. So there's no way anybody could prove that. I mean, they could try. They could say, yeah, they were both seen in the same restaurant. I said, well, yeah, of course we were. We're friends. <laughs> Just like Bill Gates and... And who's the pedophile dude with the with the island and uh, Einstein or Feinstein or uh, I don't know somebody? But they're like he was, you know, Bill Clinton was on his airplane. Well, yeah, they're a bunch of rich guys and they're going to hang around with each other. So that's just kind of how it is. It doesn't prove anything, uh, and it, they couldn't prove it with me either. Uh, if that's what I was doing, just kind of connecting people and and making things happen in the press. And you know, something I would definitely do is discredit anybody that said anything against what I wanted to say. And I would call them a, a mental case or a dummy or a, a crazy person or a wacko or a terrorist or uh, what else do people hate? Pedophile or a suspicious person or anything like that that I could do. Anybody that didn't like what I like, if they 
think that wheat is healthy and I think that it's horrible and it's going to kill everybody and that's what I'm trying to put out there, if that's what I pretend to think. Uh, if, if they're on the opposite side, oh, they must be crazy to think that wheat is good for you. That's nuts. They think that they're, it should be the base of a pyramid? No, that's crazy. And then I could uh, you know, kind of get everybody who looked at them to go, wow, they're nuts. And I guess, I guess what would be even better is if I could arrange and maybe not directly, like I wouldn't own these companies, but if I could kind of make it happen through my friends and connections, I could get some information uh, checking organizations or fact or information or what, and these organizations could pretend to be independent. And then they would say, well, Shepard says that wheat is horrible for you and this wacko nut job conspiracy theorist, uh, wacko, pedophile, uh, terrorist, uh, thinks that wheat is good for you. Well, we're going to investigate it, and we're going to find the facts, and we'll tell you what the truth is. And of course, if they're on my payroll, they're going to come back agreeing with me about what the truth is. Now, I'm thinking about doing this. I Maybe, as I'm trying to put myself kind of in the, in the brain of a bad guy or think how they think, Maybe nobody thinks like that. Maybe I am just ridiculous, and I am the first person to have ever thought of this. Maybe I'm pretty bad for having a brain that's capable of this. Maybe I'm the only human being that's ever thought of this. I, I, I don't know. I, I shouldn't say whether or not other people have planned things ahead and inspired to make things happen. I don't know. Maybe... I am the first person who has ever thought of working with other people to achieve what it is I want. And, uh, you know, when I'm thinking about being a bad guy, um, maybe the only time people do that are for positive reasons. And I'm just kind of out there and, and being a nut. Nobody's thought about it or nobody's found it important enough to do. I don't know. But these fact checkers, wouldn't this be neat? And then, you know, if I could even go in and purchase or have my friends purchase, the ones that already existed, Wikipedia, Snopes, that kind of thing. You know, instead of purchasing them, I bet I could help influence. Good people are hard to find. I bet I could find some people who agree with me on things, and their investigations would reveal exactly what I think they should. And I could get those people on the staff of Snope and Wikipedia. And maybe I wouldn't even have to be that sneaky about it. Maybe I could just pick people who had been to colleges that teach the same stuff that I believe and kind of push that angle. I mean, can you imagine if everybody that worked at Snopes or Wikipedia, let's say both, let's say that, that everybody quit tomorrow and everybody that was hired had either, you know, it was a Fox News watching uh, conservative Republican. Well, I imagine that they would go through their facts, and many things would change. Uh, there's definitely a very uh, leftist, pro-government uh, twist to most things on Snopes and, and Wikipedia. And then, and then if at the same time, because not everybody there is a, a Marxist-leaning person, if if we got the company and we we everybody quit. And we replaced everyone with NPR, CNN, CNBC type uh, people who are part of the cathedral, the, the, the advanced education, the college, the, the press. We, we got the people who were just really ingrained in the normal, not creative thinkers, just the people who believe everything that they see and hear. And oh, if the seventh grade teacher said that the Federal Reserve is blah, 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 okay, it must be true. So not critical thinkers that look into things. And if we replaced it with that, oh my gosh, can you imagine how even further to the Marxist angle Wikipedia and Snopes would be? Right now, there's probably a 90 to 10 balance or so, or 80 to 20. But imagine if we had that 100% either way, how we could control everything that came out. That would be a that would be an easy enough thing to do. It'd take a year or two or three, but Again, I'm just now thinking of this in 2021. I wonder if anybody else has ever kind of done this same thought experiment that I'm doing. What if I was a bad guy?
and wanted to take control of, of a bunch of people and, and I wanted to be the one to, to not, I mean, my goal isn't to take away their privacy. This is what happens when I'm able to know everything about them and surveil them and know what they're thinking and what they're going to do and what they're probably going to have a life that is like, you know, kind of predict everything that goes on. Well, if I want to be able to do that. And these are some great ways of doing this. Now, when I talk about causing things to happen or making things happen or being in control or engineering things that are happening, does it sound like I'm a <clears throat> some wacko guy holed up in a cabin somewhere spouting crazy stuff? Um, I, I just wanted to clarify that <clears throat> I don't mean this in the in the conspiracy theory kind of way where, where they think that they're all these big fantastical things going on that people control. Uh, I, I don't see it that way. Well, what do you think? Uh, kind of ludicrous, isn't it? The crazy places my brain went. Um, <laughs> like, like any of that stuff would even be possible, uh, much less there would be anybody willing to do it. I, I get that there are some bad dudes out there um, and gals but I don't think that they would actually make plans to try to run a tight ship. I mean, they have in the past, but I think that's a thing of the past. Like Saddam Hussein, the dude down in Venezuela, um, Kim Jong-un, uh, Mao, Pol Pot, Hitler, Mussolini, uh, Stalin. But most of these people were uh, like more than five or 10 years ago, most of them. And so I doubt that anybody right now is thinking this way. So again, it's just a silly thought experiment, probably not going on. And uh, don't like, please don't take this for more than it is. Don't be one of these wacko conspiracy theorists that actually thinks this stuff is possible. It ain't possible. It's just sci-fi folks. <laughs>